What's up, everybody? Getting into this episode of YNR. Um, it was so good to see Eileen Davidson again. It's always great to see Eileen, Ashley Abbott, looking as good as ever. Um, well, as always. Um, they need to go ahead and end this chance, Abby marriage. <laughs> they need to go ahead and just end this shit, because I'm so over it at this point. Like... I don't understand what the hell the producers was thinking when they fired the actor that played Chance. Like, why would you have him marry her, build up this wedding, plan on having children, then fire him and send the character away on a mission? That shit was so stupid. I was like, really? I hate when that happens to characters. It's so annoying. Like, you could have just had them break up before they got to the marriage part. And Abby could have just moved on. Like saddling her in a in a lonesome marriage, being a single parent, I'm like, what were y'all thinking? I'm just saying. Um, but it was good to see Ashley bonded with her grandchild. Um, Christine came over basically with some news, not good news, but some news. Um, that apparently while Chance was on the last leg of his mission or whatever. He was allegedly in a building that got bombed or whatever that somebody um, sent an explosion and whatever. It got bombed. Um, she's not sure that he was in that building, though. It was told to her that he was in that building or he could have been in that building, but she don't know if that's accurate information. Abby is holding on to hope that it wasn't him because she felt like she would feel it if it was him. So, I don't know. Maybe that's just denial talking. I don't know. I don't really see them killing Chance off. Presumably deceased, yes. Killing him, killing him. Like, he ain't never coming back killing him. I don't think they would do that. Especially if there was no body found. But they know that who, you know, whoever was in that building, there was definitely no survivors. Um, I feel bad for Abby, though, because... They just need to get her out this little boring ass storyline is what they need to do. Like, let her move on with life. You know what I mean? Like, file some type of divorce papers. Something like, let her move on, you know, because this is getting ridiculous at this point. Um, Speaking of ridiculous, Billy and Lily. Lord have mercy. Ren and Stimpy. They are getting on my everlasting nerves. I don't I, like Lily. Lily ought to be ashamed of herself. Like, where is her dignity? Like, I just want to know. She's sitting back allowing Billy to basically run their company as a weapon against the Newmans. That's pretty much what he's been doing with Chancecom since day one. It's like, Lily, you are co-CEO. Reel his ass in. Get your fishing pole. Get the hook. Throw it out tug it on him and reel that ass back in before y'all both are out of a job because when billy go down lily's going down right along with him right along with him like quicksand like i i respect the fact that you know they got some moxie or whatever and they feel bad and tough and all that going up against the likes of victor newman but let me just say this they do not have the resources that victor has they don't have the experience that victor has they don't have the connections that Victor has. So going up against him would be a losing battle. They're basically the underdog. Now, don't get me wrong. I don't like to underestimate people. They're both, you know, pretty smart. But you willing to bet the company on that? Like going up against Victor, Adam, and by all means, you're still going up against Ashlyn and Vicky as well. Because they are under the impression that Victor tipped his hand to them when he threatened to go after them. Because Lily was like, Victor doesn't usually tip his hand like this. And Billy told me, yeah, that's true. How did he tip his hand? By warning you that, he, that the gloves were coming off? He didn't tip his hand. Not at all. He didn't tell you what he was planning. Tipping his hand would be him telling you what he was going to do. That would be giving you an idea of how he was planning on taking you down. That way you would have a leg up on him. Victor's never going to hold all the cards out so you can see them. Him warning you, he's warned people before. And he still took their asses down because he's not telling you what he's going to do. He's just warning you something is about to come for you, that he's coming for your ass. That's not tipping his hand to them. That might be it. But that's not really tipping his hand because you don't know what he's going to do. You don't know what he's going to do. You don't know when he's going to do it. So you're just sitting there wondering the when, the how, the where. That's 
what you're doing. You know what I mean? And Lily pretty much could tell that Billy was rattled. And if he acts like he's not, he's lying. Because when Victor comes after you, you better be scared. Because trust me, Victor is cutthroat. He's ruthless. Look what he did to Jack and Phyllis. He got a, a crime figure to pretend to be Jack Abbott. If he can go to that length, to those lengths, to get revenge on Jack, what makes you think, what, what do you think he's going to do to you? Like, think about it. The man has a far reach. Billy and Lily do not. They don't have those connections, those resources. They don't have them. So going up against Victor is a hell of a gamble. And Billy is so stupid. He's sitting there talking about he doesn't regret deleting that video that Gaines sent him or whatever. I'm like, okay, but trying to find out what happened to Gaines is going to open up a new can of worms, though. Because if you find Gaines, which I doubt they will because Victor's not a sloppy person. He typically doesn't leave evidence behind. Um, Victor is that type of person. You only know what he wants you to know. So if you do find something, that's because more, more than likely he wanted you to find it or he just didn't care. Um, cause we all know Victor and got himself out of plenty of sticky situations. Um, but Billy is so stupid. If you find gains and gains go public with this information on Ashlyn, you're going to piss off Victoria. You're going to mess up her business. You know what I mean? She's now married to Ashlyn. Their businesses are merged. If Gaines goes public about what Ashlyn did, that's going to mess up Newman Enterprises. And we all know Victoria is not going to stand for that. She worked her ass off to get that CEO chair. Somewhat. I say somewhat because she basically emotionally blackmailed her father to get that CEO chair, but she still did some work, though, for the company. Um, but Billy is going to have a, a, a hell storm on him when the shit hit the fan because Vicky is going to show him no mercy. If he thinks Victor is a problem, Victoria is going to be even a bigger problem. Like, you know how the Newmans feel about Newman Enterprises, mainly Victoria and Victor. So you come for that company and come for them. They're going to come right back for you. So Billy might want to think long and hard on this one. Lily actually might want to think even longer because even harder on this because of the relationship Victor has had over the years with Neil. Like, you really want to complicate that for Billy, of all people? Like, I understand that's her man, and she felt like she got to stand by her man. But at what cost? You lose this job, then what? Like, she might want to think about this. I'm just saying. So anyway, moving on from that. Speaking of Vicky and Ashlyn, they're all in honeymoon bliss. All happy and shit. But, you know, they had to get back to work because the paperwork and stuff is piling up at Newman. Um, Vicky had this little look on her face like she was up to something. Because I think she knows that, you know, she she has confidence that Victor and Adam took care of games. But she looked like she up to something. Then she told Ashlyn she got this honeymoon surprise for him. Maybe it's a trip or something. I don't know. Um, but you definitely can't underestimate Victoria. Like, even if Victor and Adam, because I do agree with Billy on that one thing. I don't know if Gaines has fully been gone, like, if they fully took care of him or not. But even if they didn't, you know Victoria going to find a way. Because Victoria is not going to let nothing and nobody destroy what she's building at Newman Enterprises. She's definitely not going to let that happen. Ain't no way in hell. Um. So, anyway, moving on from that. I'm glad Mariah and Tessa had that conversation. Um... It was long overdue. You know, I'm glad they talked and stuff like that. And, you know, Mariah apologized to her about springing the whole baby thing on her and stuff like that. My thing is Mariah still needs therapy for her trauma. You know, she was kidnapped. She went through one hell of an ordeal. She needs therapy. She's not out of the woods. Like, she's still sitting here talking about some, oh, she's going to make sure that she's an important part of Dominic's life. I didn't like the sound of that because that sound all all of crazy. I didn't like the sound of it. And now she want to drop off a teddy bear to the mansion and stuff like that for him. I'm like, you've already been to the mansion already. There's no need for you to go back today. Um, I'm just saying, like, she needs to limit her time with that child. She really does. And just because you are the godmother does not mean you need to pop up all day, every day. Like, take a step back. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Go live your life. And handle your business. You don't need to be up around that child 24-7. He got a mother. And you're not it. Like She really needs to get herself together mentally. She keeps telling everybody that she's fine. She's good. She's okay. No, you're not. And I feel like she's not fully going to be fine until 
she talks to a professional. That's when she'll be fine. So anyway, moving on from that, um, Noah decided to, I guess, for the time being, move back to Genoa City. And it was good that he surprised Sharon. She was happy to see, you know, her firstborn, of course. But her and Nick were so nosy, so nosy, because they suspect that he's not back for nothing. Like they know there's a reason Noah left London. And they kept asking, why did he need a break from London and stuff? And he kept being evasive with the questions, you know, deflecting and stuff, not trying to answer them. He was just basically like, I need to change the scenery. And that answer was not good enough for them. They was like, nah, we're not buying it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I agree with them. I do feel like he has some type of agenda. But at the end of the day, he is grown and they don't need to know all his business. It's like, mind your business. When he's ready to tell you the real reason he's back, let him tell you. You ain't got to pump him for info. But it was good to see Sharon and Nick together with their son, No, having a little family bonding moment. That was good. Um, When he walked up on Tessa and Mariah, though, and he noted how happy they were, how strong they were and stuff as a couple, how solid they were, Mariah was looking at him like... What the fuck is he up to? Because she she was like, yeah, yeah, I got a story to tell. She wanted to know what the story was between him and Tessa. Because she started to get that look on her face like, what's up with y'all two? Y'all all chummy and like, what's, what's really good? Um, I definitely feel like he decided to come back to Genoa City for Tessa. That's my thinking on it. Because I remember him talking to Summer when they were at the wedding. Summer was happy to live in Milan because she was away from the Newman drama. And he was actually kind of happy that he wasn't involved in Newman drama. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So you were happy that you weren't in Newman drama, but now you're coming back to the drama. He's coming back for Tessa. He definitely still got, he got feelings for Tessa. And I could see like some little crazy ass sibling love triangle going on between him and Mariah and Tessa for her affection. Um, and Tessa and Mariah may seem like they're solid, but their relationship is definitely on shaky ground um, because of the trauma that Mariah went through and all this postpartum and all this stuff with the baby. She might have apologized now, but they're far from good. Like, it's only a matter of time for another issue pops up between them. And Noah's going to be right there to be a comfort and be a shoulder for Tessa to lean on. And then it's going to get more complicated. And, you know, Sharon going to have to get in the middle of it. You know, be in the middle of both her kids, and I know that's going to be awkward. I could kind of see where they're going with this. I hope they're not, but I kind of see it's like the writing is on the wall. Like, this is probably where they're going. Um. So, anyway, hit the comment section. That was pretty much the whole episode. Hit the comment section. Let me know what you guys thought, and I will see you all later. Have a great night. Peace.